Do you enjoy the idea of taking your favorite characters from comic books, anime, games, manga, and bringing them together, joining them in harmony to create something beautiful and interesting in a gaming situation? Well, if you do, then you've come to the right place, my friend. Welcome to The Cross Zone. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Cross Zone, number 16, where we're going to be talking about The Cross Zone, number 3. First of all, I am sorry that this series went on an extended hiatus. Secondly, the original script for this particular idea is about 7 years old, so I decided to redo it and go ahead and put it to good use. And this is the first for this video series, even though it was actually inspired by the games talking about Project Cross Zone within it. Kind of, it kind of collides on top of itself when you think about it. But I would really like to see this series continued for as many people to be able to get their hands on it and to be able to play it and enjoy it. So I decided that I would go ahead and throw my hat in the pot and come up with some ideas because we haven't seen anything talked about for a third game. So let's get right into it and uh, let's see if my idea would create an awesome experience. So the first thing I'm going to cover, which is an issue of major importance, is the characters, both playable and the enemies. And now before I get into it very heavily, the first thing that anyone who is new to the Project Cross Zone needs to know is that your characters fight in pairings and groups with pairs that are preset and solo characters that can assist the pairs. So I'm going to start with the pairs, then the solos, and then the enemies. And in this iteration of the game, we're going to include more Nintendo characters and also throw S and K into the mix. Playable pairings would be as follows. Reiji and Xiaomu, Mi and Kogoro, Ryu and Yo Sakazaki, Sakura from Street Fighter and Karin, Jin Kazuma, and Kyo Kusanagi, Cody Travers and Axel Stone, Chun Li and Blaze Fielding, Terry Bogard and Blue Mary, Super Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog, X and Zero, Morgan and Felicia, Andy Bogard and Guy, Paul Phoenix and Akira Yuki, Marth and Roy, Fire Emblem obviously. Link from Tears of the Kingdom and Zelda from Hyrule Warriors, Haomaru and Mitsurugi, Sori and Yuri Lowell, Dante and Bayonetta, this is going to be throw people for a loop, Dante and Trish, Beautiful Joe and Wonder Red, Chris Redfield and Claire Redfield, Arthur and Maximo, Marco Rossi, and Ralph Jones. Now the playable assist slash solo characters Haken Browning, Valkyrie, Frank West, Pai Chan, Mai Shiranui, Rock Howard, Sagara Sanshiro, Ken Masters, Lindis, Empa from Hyrule Warriors, Adam Hunter, Cami White, Xiao Yu, Luigi and Tails, I know, Captain Blue Jr., Jill Valentine, Dimitri Maximoff, Ooh La La, Riella Marceris, I hope I said that right, Trish, Bayonetta, 
Bruno Dillinger, Hanzo Hattori, who's from Samurai Showdown, and Cosmos. So for anyone questioning, I'm thinking that Dante can be either paired with Trish or Bayonetta, depending upon the situation. So when he pairs with one, the other will be a solo character that can team up with the other pairs. One, because I know everyone would like to be able to pair Bayonetta with all of the teams and see what she says to all of the characters. But I also know that everyone is going to want her and Dante to be able to be paired up. So this is what I think would be the best solution. And it would leave Dante keeping the team's level no matter which one he is paired with. As for Tails and Luigi, I'm just combining them into one character like what was done with Phoenix Wright and Project Cross Zone 2. That's it. The, I, I know somebody was like, but that's not a single character. It's, the rule can be broken sometimes. Goodness. So moving on, some of the boss enemies to be fought in this game. Ganondorf, Tears of the Kingdom, M. Bison or Vega, depending on your localization, Gaines, Mr. X, robot clone with the mind of the original person, Rolento, Lumine, Donald Warden, both the male and female variants of the character, Iori Yagami, Kazuya Mishima, Genjiro Kibagami, Red Armor or Firebrand, Alistair from Beautiful Joe, Virgil from Devil May Cry, June, Junie and Julie, Dr. Robotnik or Eggman, Bowser or King Koopa, Inferno from Soul Calibur 2, Oroch, High Max, and because I will always push this forward, Scourge the Hedgehog needs to be in a game. And I don't care if this would be the first one. <laughs> now, genuinely, I want to add more, but this list could get extremely long. And I think I have at least a good basis for the game to start with as is. The next thing that I would like to cover is the stuff that I would want to add to the game that I think would both expand the gameplay as well as make the game just that much more strategic and entertaining. Now, if you have ever played Project Cross Zone or Project Cross Zone 2, you'll notice that your characters with elemental based attacks don't have strengths and weaknesses to other characters using different elemental type moves. I think that this can be changed and a rock, paper, scissors type system can be implemented, sort of like Fire Emblem or Pokemon. With the wide variety of characters that could possibly be in the game, I know that it would be a lot to consider, but Intelligent Systems or the Pokemon Company would probably be happy to assist with that bit, I'm sure. The next thing that I would like to implement is changes to how the system for the super attacks works. I'm all well and good with the pairs having their specific super attacks, but if they are paired with a combined solo character that has a connection to their own series or that just so happens to have a similar purpose to themselves then they should be able to have an additional super attack that incorporates said character in with them obviously this would mean that you would have to play around with the teams to see which ones you could get the result that you're looking for but it adds to the replay value of the game also, I would like to have all pairings be able to team up with each other, so if two pairs are within one space of each other with their super meters filled, and one of them goes to attack an enemy with their super, you are given the option to have the other team perform their super attack with them, making a new super for all four characters involved for extremely high damage. And once the attack is performed, 
the team that initiated it loses their whole super meter while the other team that was used to assist only loses 50%. I think that would really add to the spectacle of the game and fans of the series would really enjoy it. Now the next important thing to discuss, which would likely happen at this point even though I don't think that it would be needed, that's DLC. DLC for this game could be additional stories that are related to the incident that sparks the events in this game, but are not really needed in order to enjoy the overall campaign. And with the DLC side chapters should come additional playable characters and enemies. Now I'm not going to name a bunch more characters here because I think that that could be far more fun for people to speculate about in the comments. So please do. Or... If you're a listener on Spotify, please leave a message and tell me what you would like to see added. There are just too many characters that could be used for something like this for me to sit and say, I know exactly who to add besides characters that may not have returned from prior games. So, for an obvious thing I know that people would want to discuss there would be no online mode for this game. And the on, only online components would be your DLC purchases and leaderboards. Why, as some may ask? Because the story of this game would be deserving of having the player's full attention. That and honestly, I think the play style of the series is better suited to individual gameplay unless of course you are making the maps co-op but being turn-based as it is that could cause problems with slow turnover for players maybe if the game had raid boss events but i'm not sure how well that will work out either better to leave it off than potentially have it bring down what is likely to be a very good game Seeing this return would be very nice, and I think with the Nintendo Switch, it could honestly take off very well. And as a fan of the games, I would really like to see where they can take the story next, if they were to do it. So Bandai Namco, Monolith Soft, and all of the other companies involved, it would be highly appreciated if you all would consider this. Fans the world over would be thanking you by picking up special editions of this game very quickly. I think I've said enough on the matter at the moment. There is more that can be covered and talked about, but I don't want to overstay my welcome. So thank you all very much for taking the time to tune in to this discussion. I already know what the next discussion is going to be, and I'm working on scripting it this very moment. Keep your eyes and ears out for more from me, and until the next time, enjoy your games. Peace out, everybody.